Thanks for joining us for the Nick Hart Show, presented each week by the Gibson Southern Football Boosters, including Agrigold, ADG Architecture and Design Group, Baker Tax and Financial Services, Bratz Car Care, Cordray Insurance, Daylight Land Management, Davis Brothers, Du Bois County Garage Doors Incorporated, Duke Energy, Foster Construction, The Fort Branch Dairy Queen, Harper's Pub and Pizza, Hobstadt Summerfest, High Dorn Construction, Hobstadt Family Dentistry, Hen Orthodontics, Hillside Gardens, Hip Dentistry, JMCO Technologies, Kiesel Enterprises Incorporated, MyTech Systems, Pole Concrete Construction, Pro Rehab, Roberts Boring Trenching and Excavating, Robert Goob Vermilion Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, Scotty's Lawn Equipment, Tim Barge C, TYFL, Reinbrecht Homes, Stodgill Funeral Home, Stodgill Monuments, in memory of Darwin and Eric Callis, by Vertical Tile Incorporated, Wash Boss, Young's Auto Body, Johnson Commercial Mowing, in loving memory of Zach Bailey, by Julia's School of Dance, Kathy Salmon Photography, Like Transport, Make Your Mark, Shearer Monuments, Southern Indiana Tire, United Fidelity Bank, Stan and Teresa Dove, by Air Evac Life Team, Ameriprise Financial, Jeremy Overton, by Engermeyer Electric, Banded Ag LLC, Bryant Auto Center Incorporated, by Center for Pediatric Therapy, by Country Barns, by Daywig Meats of Hobstock, Drosty's Jewelry Shops, Edward Jones Financial Advisor, Jason Rainey, by Fort Branch Car Wash, Full Metal Armory, by Grandparent of Isaac O'Neill, Mary Ann O'Neill, by Heritage Federal Credit Union, Heritage Petroleum LLC, Jarbo Tax Service, Casey Gray, Fuquay State Farm, by Cook Air, LNB Boutique, Little Miracles, Matt Walker Insurance, by Meisler Trailer Rentals, National Vet Health, Ripco Systems, by Titan Construction Partners, Whitledge Tree Service LLC, and by the Wabash Valley College Radio, TV, and Digital Media Department. And welcome to the Nick Hart Show here on this Tuesday night. Kyle Peach pleased to be joined by Gibson Southern head football coach Nick Hart. As always, the Titans coming off their 32-14 win on the road at Heritage Hills on Friday night. Coach, uh, as we uh, just talked about, always, always good to escape Heritage Hills with a win. Yeah, it definitely is. Um, you know, always a great program. Um, it's a really tough place to go play. So anytime uh, you get out of there with a the win, uh, it, it's a good night. So, uh, you know, move on, um, you know, 6-0. and oh, And, you know, I don't think – I kind of said this is another thing. I don't think a lot of people probably have us at 6-0 and oh, um, at this point with everybody we lost and the schedule we had back. And uh, it's a, a great credit to our kids and coaches that have done a great job of uh, – preparing um each and every week uh to come away with the win i call myself a friend i hope that rings true but even as a friend i'm not sure i had you at six and oh at this point in the season either so uh there's that uh an impressive start to the season no doubt and uh, an impressive start to this game as well i think uh, the message may have been let's get out and put the pedal to the metal early and you certainly did three uh, touchdowns scored in the first quarter, jumping out to an 18-0 lead, had a couple of point-after kicks blocked, an attempted two-point conversion failed, but still, nonetheless, out of the gate well and putting Heritage Hills playing from behind at the start of the contest is is always uh, something that would certainly be enjoyable to see. Yeah, um, I think it's important when you, when you play a team like that, if you can start out fast, they want to control the clock and, and shorten the game. Um, and, you know, if you can jump on them, uh, you know, that, that puts them at a disadvantage. Um, so I thought that was great to, to, to get out to a great start against, um, you know, an offense that, that wants to do that. And our, our kids came out, you know, ready to play. Um, so it, it was a great start there in the first quarter. 
We welcome back Tanner Boyd to the offense after a week out because of injury. Didn't really seem like he missed a step, 18 of 21. Two touchdowns, 227 yards. Did throw a pick, but uh, nice to have him back on the field. Yeah, it was. Um, you know, Liam did great the week before. Um, you know, anytime you have anybody that, that's injured or banged up, um, you know, it's always great whenever they are healed and, and can get back out there and play at a high level. Now, certainly Liam did a good job filling in last week. Glad to have Tanner back this week. Nice to know that you've got uh, that uh, backup well ready to go if need be down the line. As far as the rushing attack, Devin Roberts uh, led that attack. 14 carries, 67 yards, three touchdowns. Tanner rushed for 50 more yards on 10 carries. Sean DeLong credited for four carries, seven yards. On the receiving side of things, it was uh, Cole McKee, four receptions for 65 Isaac O'Neill, five for 59. Devin caught two passes for 46 yards and a score. Sean, six catches for 31 yards. And Michael Heron, a catch for 26. So you look at uh, all things considered, 28 uh, rushing attempts and 18 of 21 passing. A pretty balanced attack. The one, the one issue may have been the turnovers, three fumbles in the red zone, plus that interception thrown. If you're looking for something to, to work on, I guess there it is for you. Yeah. Um... You know, I think considering that that happened, I think both teams, because they turned it over early a couple times and gave us a short field. Um, you know, I think we look at it and, you know, man, if we if we had taken care of the football, um, you know, we really had a chance to put that game away earlier than what we did. And they probably look at it the other way. If if we didn't have turnovers or block punt, you know, we, we would have been right in the ball game. Um, so I think both sides were a little sloppy uh, taking care of the football. But – um, definitely something to work on. I think we, we've been really good at taking care of the football the first five weeks. Um, you know, it just was, was one of those nights. Um, but we'll, we'll continue to to work on ball security and taking care of the football. And, um, you know, and then, you know, the extra points are big, too. Um, you know, we had a chance there, you know, where, where that really could have hurt you and it can hurt you down the line. Um, so so we got to do a better job of, of protecting on the extra points uh, to make sure that, um, you know, th those are automatic. We talked about the Titans getting out to that 18 nothing lead. Heritage Hills would score with 97 seconds to play in the first half on a 15-yard touchdown pass. Their extra point would be good. So at the break, it would be 18-7, Titans in front. And uh, talk about the message to the club at where you sat at halftime. Well, we, we had some things to fix that, that we knew, like offensively, up front, we had missed a few things. Um, but you know, I think the big message was we didn't have to punt in the first half, you know, so we had three drives end in the red zone uh, without points. And so, you know, if you keep playing, you finish those drives, um, you know, it's a completely different ball game at that point. So um, I thought defensively we had played really well um, up until the half. They had one drive there before half uh, where they scored. Um, and so we made a little bit of an adjustment to what they were doing. But um, it was mostly just that we, you know, needed to go finish. Come out in the third quarter, and with 8.43 left in the frame, Devin Roberts took it in from one yard out. Cam Novotny would get back on track with the extra points, and the Titans had a 25-7 lead. They would hold Heritage Hills off the scoreboard in the third quarter. It goes to the fourth when the Patriots would strike again. Skyler Staples took it in for a one-yard touchdown run. The extra point would be good. It was 25-14, to and then finally, with 2.59 to go in the contest, a Tanner Boyd touchdown pass to Michael Heron for 26 yard uh, and the score. Cam Novotny's kick would be good, and the Titans would make it stick the final three minutes, the final 32 uh, to 14. So a few a few fumbles and things of that nature to clean up, but uh, still getting a win, uh, kind of running away there a little bit from Heritage Hills. Um, final assessment of the game and, and uh, where things stand after coming away with that W. You know, I, I thought it was. I thought our defense was really good uh, the entire night. Uh, it's a little bit different offense than than what we've seen throughout the year, and I think sometimes you can start a little slow um, when, when you're playing a different style that you haven't seen because it's really hard to replicate in practice um, when you don't play that style. So uh, I thought our our kids came out and on defense and played really well. Um, we got off to a great start offensively. Uh, just need to finish drives um, and clean some things up a little bit on both sides of the ball. I thought it got a little sloppy there, just assignment-wise um, and stuff as the game kind of wore on. 
Nonetheless, it adds up to a win on the road for the Titans against a very, very good Heritage Hills ball club. But your team's now 6-0. and The AP poll has you at number two in the state rankings in Class 3A. The uh, IFCA coaches poll has you at third. When we come back, we'll talk about uh, that, uh, that uh, monkey on the back being the defending state champs and getting some of this statewide recognition. We'll talk about that. We'll look ahead to the upcoming matchup for you as well. Stay with us as the Nick Hart Show continues. The Nick Hart Show is presented each week by the Gibson Southern Football Boosters, made possible by Robert's Boring Trenching and Excavating, Robert Goob Vermillion, Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, Scotty's Lawn Equipment, Tim Barge Seed, TYFL, Brian Brecht Holmes, Stodgill Funeral Home, Stodgill Monuments, in memory of Darwin and Eric Callis, by Vertical Tile Incorporated, Wash Boss, Young's Auto Body, Johnson Commercial Mowing, in loving memory of Zach Bailey, by Julia's School of Dance, Kathy Salmon Photography, Like Transport, Make Your Mark, Shearer Monuments, Southern Indiana Tire, United Fidelity Bank, Stan and Teresa Dove, by Air Evac Life Team, and by Ameriprise Financial, Jeremy Overton. Support provided by Wabash General Hospital, now offering MyChart, giving patients secure digital access to their health information. Get access to clinical charts, prescribed medication, test results, appointment information, and more. The MyChart messaging service allows you to communicate with your provider to ask clinical questions. Patients may sign up for the service at WGHMyChart.com. MyChart at Wabash General Hospital, another example of people you know helping people you love. Back with Titan coach Nick Hart on the Nick Hart Show. And, uh, Coach, we alluded to it before the break, you, you, and you had mentioned it earlier, you know, not sure how many people would have you at 6-0 and given the schedule that you've had with some larger schools and, and really a you know, nothing really easy on this schedule by any stretch for the Titans to this point in the season. But here you sit six weeks in, and you're ranked second and third in the latest uh, polls out there in Class 3A. Think your team's deserving of that recognition? Is that an appropriate ranking? And what does that do to this team and the opponents, I guess, that are left on the schedule for you guys? Uh, you know, I don't know about the ranking. Um, you know, I know there's been years where we weren't ranked um, and went on a big run. And there's been years that we were ranked first and, and got beat in the first round. So, um you know, I, I don't spend a lot of time on that. I think it's great recognition for your program uh, to be mentioned with, with some of those teams that are at the top. Um, but that's about all that that's worth to me, um, just because, you know, the, the real polls um, are in November uh, when, when the playoffs get rolling. So, um, you know, that that's really our focus is, is continuing. We got a chance here. Um, to control our own destiny in the conference, um, to win a conference championship. And then, you know, then you, you turn your sights to uh, to the sectional and, and getting ready for the playoffs. But, uh, you know, I think one thing we've talked to the kids about all year is, especially now that we're in the conference play, you know, with what we did last year and how we were able to beat some people, um, you know, when we show up, that date's been circled on their calendar for a long, long time. And so – you know you're going to see everybody's best shot. You're going to um, – there's been people scheming for you, um, you know, for 365 days. And and so we got to show up and, and, and be ready to go and prepared and, and ready to take that shot. When we talk about starting to look at postseason play, all of a sudden it's hard to believe that we're in the last third of the regular season going into week seven here. But uh, you look at sectional 30, the Titans are there. Obviously uh, Mount Vernon, our opponent this week, uh, in sectional 30, along with Washington, Owen Valley, Vincennes, Lincoln West, Vigo, Pike Central, and Princeton. And as you look at the records of the teams in sectional 30, boy, does this matchup this week have particular interest because the Titans are set at 6-0, and and the team with the next best record in the sectional is Mount Vernon at 4-2. and So not only is, is this matchup one to pay attention to in the pocket, but also in the sectional coming up. Yeah. Um, you know, Mount Vernon's a team we played twice last year. Uh, we played them, drew them in the first round of the sectional. 
Um, and we'll talk more about them, but, you know, great program. Coach Messmer's really done a great job there uh, of getting those guys rolling. Um, and I think when you kind of look at our sectional, maybe preseason, it, it didn't look super strong to a lot of people. But, you know, you got Owen Valley that's ranked um, and, and undefeated. And you're talking about statewide recognition and respect. <laughs> I'm on the coaches poll and, and I don't understand, you know, with what Ben Sins has done this year in the SIC. You know, to, to me, they're they're a top five team in the state uh, with what they've been able to do with their schedule um, in, in their conference. Um, that, that resume is really impressive of what they put together. So you, know, you look at there, there's four really strong teams, uh, you know, right there in our sectional. I missed Owen Valley slid underneath my radar there at six and oh. So they're six and oh. Titans are six and oh. Mount Vernon and Vincennes Lincoln are both four and two in sectional 30. So. Uh, again, a respectable field there in the sectional with uh, nothing going to be easy come postseason play, but really nothing's been easy for the Titans so far at all this season. Coming up next, we'll talk about the Wildcats of Mount Vernon, the Week 7 opponent for the Titans. As the Nick Hart Show continues, stay with us. You're listening to the Nick Hart Show, presented each week by the Gibson Southern Football Boosters, including AgriGold. ADG Architecture and Design Group, Baker Tax and Financial Services, Brett's Car Care, Cordray Insurance, Daylight Land Management, Davis Brothers, Dubois County Garage Doors Incorporated, Duke Energy, Foster Construction, The Fort Branch Dairy Queen, Harper's Pub and Pizza, Hobstadt Summerfest, High Dorn Construction, Hobstadt Family Dentistry, Hen Orthodontics, Hillside Gardens, Hip Dentistry, JMCO Technologies, Kiesel Enterprises Incorporated, MyTech Systems, Pole Concrete Construction, and Pro Rehab. Coach Hart will be back with us in just a moment, but before that, let's do uh, our quick uh, weekly check of all things Pocket Athletic Conference First in the big school division, Gibson Southern sits atop the league at 2-0. They're 6-0 on the season. The Titans have now won 17 straight football games. Boonville tied with Gibson Southern for the conference lead at 2-0 in conference play, but the Pioneers are 4-2 overall. Washington sits alone in third place in the league standings right now. They're 1-1 in conference play, but 2-4 overall. Mount Vernon and Heritage Hills next in the big school league standings at 1 and 2 each. Mount Vernon is 4 and 2 overall while Heritage Hills is now 3 and 3 following the loss to the Titans on Friday night. And Princeton rounds out the big school division standings. They're 0 and 2 in conference play and still winless on the season at 0 and 6. In the pocket athletic conference scores involving big school uh, division teams from Friday night, Boonville Got the conference win over Mount Vernon, 32-20. As we know, Gibson Southern beat Heritage Hills, 32-14. In another big school uh, matchup, Washington beat Princeton, 41-15. In case you want to know the small school scores in a non-conference game, Pike Central lost to North Knox, 35-14. It was South Spencer in a small school division matchup, beating Forest Park, 34-21. Southridge beat Tell City, 34-6. And in another non-league game, Tecumseh beat North Posey 45-29. to Looking at the Pocket Athletic Conference matchups for this Friday night, Mount Vernon at Gibson Southern, a 7 o'clock kickoff. We'll talk more about that in just a bit on the show. Meanwhile, Princeton is at Boonville in another big school PAC matchup. Washington will be at Heritage Hills as well in the small school division. North Posey visits Forest Park. South Spencer is at Southridge and Tell City is at Pike Central. That's a look at all things PAC. When we come back, we'll zero in on the Titans matchup with Mount Vernon. Coming up on Friday night, that's as Nick Hart rejoins the show. It's the Nick Hart Show on 89.1 The Bash. The Nick Hart Show is presented each week by the Gibson Southern Football Boosters, made possible by Robert's Boring Trenching and Excavating, Robert Goob Vermillion, Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, Scotty's Lawn Equipment, Tim Barge Seed, TYFL, Brian Brecht Homes, Stodgill Funeral Home, Stodgill Monuments, 
in memory of Darwin and Eric Callis, by Vertical Tile Incorporated, Wash Boss, Young's Auto Body, Johnson Commercial Mowing, in loving memory of Zach Bailey, by Julia's School of Dance, Kathy Salmon Photography, Like Transport, Make Your Mark, Shearer Monuments, Southern Indiana Tire, United Fidelity Bank, Stan and Teresa Dove, by Air Evac Life Team, and by Ameriprise Financial, Jeremy Overton. Well, back here on the Nick Hart Show, time to uh, finalize things tonight, looking ahead to the Titans matchup back at home uh, to take on Mount Vernon. The Wildcats come calling a 7 o'clock kickoff. Pre-game show on 89-1 The Bash will begin at around 645. And obviously, Coach, so we, we talked about it before, not only does this count for the conference, but also kind of gives you a preview of what's to come in the sectional. And what can you tell us about the 4-2 and two Wildcats? You know, they're really – I was kind of shocked, and this is a credit to, the, to their coaching staff. Um, you know, I kind of went through and watched film from a scheme purpose the, the first time, and then, then you kind of start looking at personnel. Um, and when looking at their personnel, they're extremely young. Um, and so, you know, that didn't show uh, when, whenever you watch them the first time. So I think that's a, a credit to their coaching staff of having those young kids ready to go and play. Um but, you know, Nico Burnett's back at quarterback um, for his, I think, seventh year. Uh, and he's just a junior, so he'll be an eighth-year senior next year, I think. It seems like he's been there for a long time. But, uh, um, you know, he's a great football player, um, does a great job of distributing the football. they got some great weapons around him. And um, and if they, his weapons aren't open, uh, he's really dangerous taking off and extending plays to throw it or to take off, you know, running the football. So, uh, you know, offensively, they've had a great amount of success. Um, and so, you know, uh, it presents a challenge when you have a kid like him back there that, that's a dual threat guy and, and can do do both things equally well. So, um, you know, it's going to be a big week for our defense to to try and get some stops. And them defensively, um, you know, they just – they're really aggressive. Um, they're going to blitz you. They're going to get after you. Um, they're physical and, and get to the football. So, um, you know, I think it's a great test. Um, both games they've lost, they, they were right in, and, and it kind of got away from them. Um, so, you know, great test for us on Friday night against a, a good football team. The Wildcats had a four-game win streak stopped uh, on Friday night to losing to Boonville in conference play. 32-20 to 20 was the final score, just the second time all season that the Wildcats had given up 30 points or more. The other was in a win over South Spencer, 56-30. to 30. The only other loss was back in week one to Heritage Hills, 25-9. to 9. So, Coach, as we talk about this game on Friday night, you kind of give us a preview of what we expect to see from the Wildcats. What are the keys to success for your club this week? Well, um, taking care of the football. Uh, we've already <laughs> talked about that one, but, you know, we got to do a good job of but taking care of the football, um, you know, and then I think defensively, just the the different things and sets that they throw at you and, and what they're able to do out of them, um, you know, finding ways to get stops uh, defensively is huge and, and, and limiting them, making them drive the football and, and not having some of the big plays that they've had uh, throughout the course of the season. But uh, you know, it's going to be a fun night. It looks like the weather's going to be good at this point of the week and um, it's homecoming. Uh, and uh, at halftime, it's our uh, TYFL night, so uh, kind of a double dip of, of exciting things to, to get people to the game, and uh, should be a great crowd and, and a great atmosphere, and, you know, getting to get back home after a couple weeks on the road is something we're excited about. Always fun to be at home, but I got to ask you, Coach, because coaches have different takes on this. Do you, do you like homecoming? Do you like the extracurricular stuff as a coach? I know it's going to pack the seats. What, what's your take from a coaching perspective on all the extra stuff that goes on at these games sometimes? You know, uh, it's not a huge effect on us. I, I don't think, you know, we'll move our pregame warm-ups up, uh, you know, 10 or 15 minutes uh, to, to give time for the, the homecoming ceremony. And it's just, you know, you go out a little bit earlier, you're in the locker room a little bit longer. Um you know, when I was younger, I probably stressed about some of these things a little bit more than I do now. Um, but, you know, you just kind of get used to it um, through the course of the year, especially as you get later in the season. Uh, you have your homecoming, your senior night. You're going to be a senior night for somebody else. 
you're probably going to be a homecoming for somebody else somewhere along the line. So, you know, it ends up becoming about, you know, four of, of your nine games, you know, you're in some type of deal like this. So um, it's our first one this year. Um, but I know, you know, next week will be our senior night. The week after will be Boone Bills. Um, so, you know, it, it's just part of it. Uh, when, when they tee the ball up, really none of this, you know, matters. Um, and, you know, I've always kind of had the message during homecoming week, our job of homecoming is to win the football game. Uh, nobody likes going to, to a homecoming where they're not going to win. Um, so, you know, that that's our job and our focus this week. And then just a quick comment on the, the Youth Football League. I know that that is something that's very near and dear to you and very special to the Titan program. And, and I think a lot of folks can can credit recent successes probably to getting things going at that young level and a chance to recognize those youngsters will be special on Friday. Yeah, um, those youngsters and, and maybe just as importantly, the, the coaches of, of those youngsters, um, because without them, you know, it, it wouldn't work. Um, so. You know, it's a great night um, to, to get them out there and, and, and honor them at halftime and, and, you know, seeing all the, the different TYFL jerseys out at the game, um, you know, is always something great. But uh, we have a great youth football league. Our, our numbers are huge this year um, in the league. And so, you know, it's just uh, a great night to, to be able to honor them. So we'll do all that on Friday night, plus hopefully win a a football game, too. It's the uh, Titans and the Wildcats Pocket Athletic Conference game back at the Jewel. Again, kickoff at 7. Our pregame show on 89.1 will be at 645. Coach, thanks for the time, and good luck this week. Thank you. That is Titan coach Nick Hart. That is the Nick Hart Show. I'm Kyle Peach. We'll see you next week right here. Thanks for joining us for the Nick Hart Show. Presented each week by the Gibson Southern Football Boosters, including Agrigold, ADG Architecture and Design Group, Baker Tax and Financial Services, Bratz Car Care, Cordray Insurance, Daylight Land Management, Davis Brothers, Du Bois County Garage Doors Incorporated, Duke Energy, Foster Construction, The Fort Branch Dairy Queen, Harper's Pub and Pizza, Hobstadt Summerfest, Hydorn Construction, Hobstadt Family Dentistry, Hen Orthodontics, Hillside Gardens, Hip Dentistry, JMCO Technologies, Kiesel Enterprises Incorporated, MyTech Systems, Pole Concrete Construction, Pro Rehab, Roberts Boring Trenching and Excavating, Robert Goob Vermillion, Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, Scotty's Lawn Equipment, Tim Barge C, TYFL, Reinbrecht Homes, Stodgill Funeral Home, Stodgill Monuments, in memory of Darwin and Eric Callis, by Vertical Tile Incorporated, Wash Boss, Young's Auto Body, Johnson Commercial Mowing, in loving memory of Zach Bailey, by Julia's School of Dance, Kathy Salmon Photography, Like Transport, Make Your Mark, Sharer Monuments, Southern Indiana Tire, United Fidelity Bank, Stan and Teresa Dove, by Air Evac Life Team, Ameriprise Financial, Jeremy Overton, by Engermeyer Electric, Banded Ag LLC, Bryant Auto Center Incorporated by Center for Pediatric Therapy by Country Barns by Daywig Meats of Hobstock Drosty's Jewelry Shops Edward Jones Financial Advisor Jason Rainey by Fort Branch Car Wash Full Metal Armory by Grandparent of Isaac O'Neill Marianne O'Neill by Heritage Federal Credit Union Heritage Petroleum LLC Jarbo Tax Service, Casey Gray, Fuquay State Farm, by Cook Air, LNB Boutique, Little Miracles, Matt Walker Insurance, by Meisler Trailer Rentals, National Vet Health, Ripco Systems, by Titan Construction Partners, Whitledge Tree Service LLC, and by the Wabash Valley College Radio, TV, and Digital Media Department.